another edition of the podcast Super Friends. As we welcome, it is everybody. And we, well, we were close. We almost everybody showed up on time, but uh, here we are. We'll go around clockwise like we're the Brady Bunch and we'll head to the Dallas Fort Worth area. Intros. Howdy, everybody. I am Johnny Podcast and I am coming from Horn Frog Country. Baseball team is currently doing very well. I'm a full time, I don't even know why we say full time anymore. I'm a podcast producer. I focus a lot on audio and video. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here with my super friends. Coming in with the probably the most prepared Super Friends episode we've ever had. My name is Catherine O'Brien. I'm tuning in from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm a podcast. I'm also a full time podcast producer, and my company's called Branch Out Programs. David Yaz in Boston, pod six one seven dot com, the Boston Podcast Network. I am a podcast producer. 110% of the time, Ooh. even more than full time. <laughs> Happy to be here. Uh, John Gay, Jag in Detroit podcast. Uh, like Johnny, I am repping my alma mater today, although uh, I don't believe we have a baseball team, but uh, best of luck to y'all. Uh, John Gay, Jag in Detroit podcast. I produce podcasts, branded podcasts for businesses and nonprofits based out of the Detroit area. Matt Cundell, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. The uh, Sound Off Podcast Network, and uh, we are the home of about 70 some odd podcasts, and we also make and produce a bunch of them. Uh, thanks for everyone for being here today. There's not a lot of excitement when I sort of mention what the, the subject matter is because it, it's a weird one and an outlier. Now, just so if you're listening to this show for the first time, we work with uh, podcasters and they have a lot of questions. And I think one of the questions that has come up a lot over the last year. And, it, and I went back in my notes and it really started to ramp up in March of 2022. And that's the idea of transcription. I'm glad one of us is taking notes. <laughs> I had to look back really to, to, find, to find out. And so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell my story is that I went back around that time and I, I started to push in a little bit on transcription. And I got into a bit of a Twitter discussion with uh, uh, James Cridland and Rob Greenlee, who were on stage at Podcast Evolutions. And I said, why is it that we would have to pick up the bill for transcriptions? Is it really worth it? Blah, blah, blah. And I got some pushback from James Cridland said, you of all people should be able to cover the cost of this and, <laughs> and find a sponsor on your podcast, of which I did find a sponsor um, the same day. So he was right. I could find a sponsor to cover the cost of that thing. But, but in that time, it has been a bit of an adventure. And one thing that we've talked a lot about and had questions from our clients. So that's why we're going to discuss this today. And that's uh, transcriptions. But first, I want to start off with one question and, and just go around the table and you can you can um, weigh in as as you can here. And that's what's the difference between captions and transcriptions? Jag. Wow, <laughs> on the hot seat. Uh, <sighs> captions, are, to me, I, I might be wrong. So feel free to, you know, buzz me or gong me on this. But to me, a caption is auto-generated, pops up on the screen as it's happening. A transcription is a preset uh, document that has a list of what everything said that's uh, very useful. We'll come back to this, especially for accessibility, those who may be hard of hearing uh, or differently abled. So to me, a caption kind of pops up automatically. A transcription is a more formal document. IMHO. Any disagreement? John. I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree. I would necessarily. I, I would think that their uses are different, which is why they're titled differently. So captions are normally, at least in my experience, we're usually no, we're, we're normally using captions for fifteen to one minute long videos that we're sharing on social. That way, the reason that you're adding those on there is so combining with the visual element, or if you're doing an audiogram. But if you're do, we're doing video podcasts and we're putting the we're we're burning on the the captions on there. So it gives that person an extra excuse that they don't have to open the video, but they can stop and read what's happening. And hopefully after they read a sentence or two, they find it interesting enough to actually click onto the video and consume the rest of the, that little clip that we're posting, which would then hopefully drive them to listen to an, a full episode of the podcast to drive them to become a full subscriber versus like Jack said, with people who may be hard of hearing or consume podcasts by reading them, which I would make the argument is maybe like 1% of the total listening population, which is not a, 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 per, a percent of the population that we should discount totally. But you're reading the podcast as if it were like a blog post or an essay or a book, maybe. And that would be my kind of detailing it out a little bit more of what Jack said. Yeah, I'll jump in and say 
when you caption something like an audiogram to promote your podcast, like Johnny was referencing, those are the ones when, when we, when I create those, uh, I want to make sure that the, the words are perfect because those are the, you're, you're only, you only got like 60 seconds or so to capture someone's attention and they are powerful, right? When you see a captioned, you know, TikTok video or, a, and it's got the animated words and certain words are popping. That is a persuasive way to get people in to your podcast. And, uh, transcription is, you know, you want them to be accurate. And, but if you were trying to produce a podcast, a video podcast where you're going to edit every word and have that captioned at the bottom of the screen, Mm, that's something that's very time and time intensive. And I'm not sure any of us go through that level or people want to necessarily pay for that now, but there are good services that can produce pretty accurate transcriptions. Well, David, you maybe just think of it. There is one startling similarity between captions and transcriptions that we may be overlooking. And it's that they're boilerplate. Now you have to have them both. Uh, every podcast, it has a transcription element, at least somewhat to them now and clients and people who are hosting podcasts somewhat expect that from the people that they're working with. And if you're creating video or promotional material, audiograms, videos, having captions on there is kind of like you sort of have to have that now. And there's just too many tools out there available, whether it's headliner or whether it's veed.io, which I use that they just automatically do it in there. And if it's only a minute long, yeah, you can edit those and make them correct. They're not perfect, but it's sort of that extra step that you kind of have to take now if you want your podcast to even compete with all the other ones. You're Johnny, you're saying it's table stakes to, to have these transcriptions. I think, you know, and, and we'll get into this a little bit more as we go through this today, but you know, there are services, as you mentioned, that will generate your transcription with AI. And I have yeah. found them generally 90 ish percent accurate, depending on the service. And then it's a matter of going in and, and tweaking what they made, you know, whether it's punctuation or misspelling names, things like that. I have actually recently begun paying a service uh, that has a human person, a human person, a human person transcribing <laughs> the episodes. It, it costs a little bit more than the AI. Uh, but to me, it was worth it to buy my time back. It was worth it for me as a producer. It was worth it. Um, they range depending on the bells and whistles you need. If there's thick accents, if there's more than two people, if, if things of that bad audio, um, the transcription service typically ran between one and two dollars a minute uh, for uh, a lot, an actual person to go through and transcribe the podcast. Which if I get a fifteen or a thirty minute podcast for a client, uh, it's worth it to me to have some pay someone to do it, and I can skim it, copy paste it, and not spend a half an hour tweaking it or put something generated by AI up there that's not totally accurate. Uh, Catherine, why should podcasters transcribe a show? I. Uh there's a couple of reasons that I would suggest. Some of them are obvious. We've talked about a little bit at the accessibility issue. That is real. People who are hard of hearing or deaf, they would like to access podcasts. And so a transcript is a great reason to do that. Accessibility. The other reason, and this one kind of has come up for some of my clients, is if you are talking about a controversial topic, you would like to have a transcript that is a record of what you actually said. Um, let's check the transcript and see what we actually said about this particular issue if something should come up so that's Objection, another your honor <laughs> read it in the transcript it's a pdf it can't be changed like these captions you've been talking about yeah so th that's a great reason to have it as a, as a record and then i have also found this is one of those that because we are in podcasts and we love podcasts it's not this is not for us but some people they're not fans of listening to podcasts and they much they would much rather skim a PDF document and get the information that way. So I know for exact, I'm thinking of one client in particular, they do some materials for that they expect their staff to listen to. So it's not quite an internal podcast, but there's information about the organization. And some people just aren't audio listeners. They want to be able to read something and get the, the same information. So those are some reasons right off the top of my head. But Catherine, I don't want yes. people to read the show. I want them to listen to the show. <laughs> I know, Matt. I know you want people to listen to the show, but sometimes we I'm can't deaf. choose. I'm deaf. I can't. <laughs> we can't choose how people want to consume our content all the time. Fish where the fish are. Make your show available to everybody. I would assume not put shows on YouTube, but at the same time, people are going to consume shows on YouTube, so it's got to be I there. was just going to say, we've, we've, we're have losing that battle for all the people who said, I don't want to make an MP4 of my of my show. So 
sometimes. Sometimes we just have to do what the audience wants and not always what we want to do, Matt. I know we were talking about captions a second ago. I think we're being captioned right now if anybody's watching this on Facebook. Is that possible? They yeah. Suck. The Facebook Live will <laughs> auto-generate captions. Now, those aren't necessarily going to be accurate. I don't know if it's properly interpreting my Boston accent, for example. <laughs> Wicked close. Instead of David, it just says Matt Damon, colon, and then whatever you're saying. <laughs> Goodwill hunting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Like them Those apples? apples? Yeah. <laughs> Other reasons why we should transcribe a show? SEO. Mm. So Matt has hit on it you know, more times than we can count. You have to have a website for your podcast. And you'll notice that in your hosting site, which is different from your website, the hosting is where you're actually uploading each episode, the episode description, you can't fit an entire transcript in there. And even then SEO crawlers and websites like Google are pulling from the episode title rather than what's normally in your description, something we've found out in the recent past. And if you're gonna have a website, which you should, then you should probably have a transcription of your episode because Google will pull your transcript for SEO purposes. And what better way than having the entire episode written out and having that boost your website up when people search for your guest, the company they work for, the 10 or 12 different topics that you talked about, books that were mentioned, websites, other podcasts, people. That's all boosting you up the rankings on your web on Google or whatever search engine people are using to help more people find your website. Forgive me for stating the obvious here, but this is what I tell my clients. To, to Johnny's point, Google can search text. Google hasn't yet been able to search audio. So you need a text version of the, your content for Google to find it for SEO. Catherine, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right. And uh, also, if you find people who, in your audience who do want the transcript, that can be a great email opt-in. So if you have an email list, which you should have an email list, that's a great little gimme for people who want to get on your list if they are interested in getting that transcript. I think Apple's crawling the audio. They're already pulling keywords in order to categorize shows. I think Dan Meisner found that a few months ago. So I think at some point Google's going to be doing the same thing and creating their own transcripts and then using that to, to figure the whole thing out. Well, as we all know, Google tends to lag behind Apple in the world of podcasting. I have... Um... Oh, do you want to keep going on SEO, Matt? I have a different... Um... Nope, keep going. Okay, well... A Another reason to explore the world of transcription is maybe, maybe it's an obvious one, I don't know, but editing. Um, it makes editing your podcast a heck of a lot easier. If you're working with someone, say you have a guest on your show, the guest calls the next day and say, oh, I, I want to take out the part about when I talked about how much I love my dog because my dog just died. That's terrible. That's a really dark <laughs> example. I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> but, but let's say something like that, and you know, oh, geez, I got to get that part out. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to find that without having to search through. I don't remember when he said that. You know, you can keyword search for the name of the dog or whatever. And, uh, you know, I had a, I was producing a podcast last week, and there was an expert talking about generative AI, and he kept saying, genitive ai and finally oh. I, finally i stopped and i and i said you know i don't i don't mean to tell you your business but i think you're saying genitive ai instead of generative he said i am oh man and so i said don't worry about it just say it right from now on i was able to do a search and replace with the audio of the way the word was supposed to be pronounced oh. so i suppose it's better than genital ai yeah in my mind <laughs> that was a different that's a different podcast yeah that sort of brings me to the intersection, though, of you know transcriptions and editing. Is anybody using Descript to do that? Yes, I love it. I think we all are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so editing and transcription are kind of coming together in that in that facet. Yeah, that's why I continue to use Descript, even though it it is not the most super accurate transcription tool, but you know it gets up there to you know around ninety percent probably, but. It's just such a time saver when you're looking to cut out certain language, you know, or move things around. Um, and, you know, for those who haven't used Descript, there are some useful tools. You can search for a host of filler words. I usually do take out the ums and uhs with one click of the mouse. And so, you know, you do have to be careful. You're not like 
cutting anything that shouldn't be cut, but it's a fantastic time saver, I find. What I find about the script is that it has uh, it it uh, for long podcasts where you need to take big chunks out, where you need to take out whole sections of of audio or move it around. It's fantastic for that. And I just interrupted everybody again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would ahead, like Catherine. to now do a dramatic reenactment of every single time a new transcription service comes into the realm of the podcast Super Friends. Super Friends, guess what? I learned about a new transcription service the rest of the super friends oh my gosh tell us all about it how is it going it's pretty good it works at about i would say 90 percent the rest of the super friends nod knowingly mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it seems like we've all had the same transcription issues they they come on strong we try them out 90 we get to that we get to that nice juicy ai 90 percent and we all either need to do human tweaks or you know some sort of correction that we know that's going to come up every single time and we're all we're all just right there right at that 90 percent. it's just it just can't get to that 100 percent. and especially mm -hmm. if you have any kind of dial like like uh, david was saying before any sort of accent or jargon or, or terminology that's specific to us an industry it it rarely can catch up on those things but so we're all just right at that seven scene and, and scene 90 excellent um we'll give you a round of applause for that um the, 90 percent sounds high but that means there's a mistake in every sentence unless it's a less uh, do the math right but if you um i've noticed it in, that descript is the most powerful tool for ed, the melding of transcription and editing but if you go to a different service we can mention them up maybe we all will i do pay for a service called Trint, G-R-I-N-T, and it is just noticeably more accurate. And it will put in things like um, if someone laughs, it'll pick that up and it'll put in a bracket laughter or laugh or something like that. And um, and when you see that, it's like, oh, good. So now it, it knew when someone was laughing and didn't just, you know, try to make up a word or something. So uh, I wish the script would up its game in terms of accuracy. Or I wish one of these other services would turn into a robust editing tool. But that's that's maybe you guys have different experiences. I don't know. Uh, David, I've heard that Trent is very good. It is quite pricey, though, isn't it? Yep. Well, it, yeah, I, I don't recall off the top of my head how much it costs. But yes, you pay for it. Counterpoint, uh, uh, maybe, maybe we should keep it at the 90% so that then it doesn't take over and destroy all of civilization. That's just also another thought. Well, I have seen some podcasters where you'll see the transcript of the show posted on a website and it'll say, you know, this is generated by a transcription service. Please know that it might not be 100 percent accurate. And if if you're putting it up there for SEO purposes, then, you know, 95 percent is really just fine. But if 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 but there, there are some people you're going to work with that want every word, you know, spot on accurate. Yeah. Um, another kind of way that I'm using it is uh, I, I have some clients that I'm working with that rather than posting videos, uh, like short clips to promote the podcast on social media, we're turning them into like kind of quote graphics. So we're pulling like really interesting things that people can read. So if you're consuming something on Twitter or Instagram, rather than scrolling by and seeing another podcast video, you see, oh, this is six sentences of a really interesting piece of dialogue from an episode. Mm. And the transcript can be really helpful in pulling that. So you can search by keyword, whether it's entrepreneurship, business, investing, that, that's the space that I play in. So those are just the words that come to my mind. Um, and then you can pull that text, put it into Figma or Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, make a really cool quote graphic card that's engaging and bright. And that's another way that you're, we're using the transcripts. Jag, what do you use for transcripts? The script? So, uh, so I use the script when I do when I generate one through AI. The service that I use that pays actual people to do it is called Go Transcript, which was recommended to me by a guest of one of my podcast clients. It was the dean of a medical school somewhere, and said, "This is uh, this is the one I use for lectures, and it's it's it's, pro it's probably ninety nine percent accurate." Another thing Descript has to to sort of uh, put a little shine on your transcripts or really your podcasts is there are stock voices, really robotic uh, voiceover artists. 
some better than others, but they give you a, about a dozen different voices you can choose from. Literally type the text in. And it's good for if you need a quick way to create an opening uh, to, a, to a segment. You know, it says, now let's check the mailbag, something like that. Now, th that'll sound fine. If it's, if it's anything, you know, super long, the listener will realize it's a robot. But And you can create your own virtual voice as well if you read a script and then type in and you, know, you have mixed results there but it's the scary world of artificial intelligence have you it. tried that dave yeah i have which my own voice yes yeah and i've used it if it if i just need if i've voiced something over in the past and like i have to insert a couple words for some reason that the client is requesting it it can often work pretty well but if you if you were you know, th this comes in handy if you're not near a microphone or anything and your only option is to talk into your crappy laptop microphone. Uh, <clears throat> but if you needed to say something like, on today's show, we'll be talking with Janet Smith, who's a uh, CEO of blah, blah, blah. It probably is not going to be great because it won't pick up all the correct intonations and sort of your usual cadence and flow of your speaking style. Um, that may improve over time. But I've used the robot ones. The, the first the first choice they give you is sounds a lot like the guy that used to do the voiceover for every movie of the 80s, you know, in a, in a world. In a, in a world. Yes. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. So it's you can have fun with it. You know, if you want, it, it works if it's kind of a light segment, you know. I have to say, David, you, you're hearing you, you do that demonstration with your voice was the very first time I'd ever heard the it descript generate the voice for you and it gave it i remember it, i had chills because it was sort of like <laughs> there was something uncanny valley for me about hearing your voice you know your voice generated just out of nowhere and it, i remember thinking like okay i as a human being i can tell this is not a human speaking but it was it was a little too close for comfort so there's been a couple of moments with the AI. There's a couple of uh, Boston Dynamic robots that I've seen where I'm like, okay, I, I feel it in my the fiber of my humanness. And but that was one of the moments where I was like, oh, this is just getting started. It's it's going to be going somewhere play pretty soon. That's going to be a, right. interesting times for sure. I mean, is there a lawyer in the house? Like, should we be changing the words <laughs> of our clients after they record something? Do I need to get a waiver <laughs> signed? Is there a lawyer around oh, that's here? That's a good idea. <laughs> the, the way that the script is, I, I think, is getting around any legal issue is you have to read a script that takes you about 10 to 15 minutes to read. And so because of that, at least through the script, you're not able to generate a robot of someone else. Right. <laughs> so because that that would be even scarier. But now I'm sure that's coming, too. But you, you don't want a case where, you know, you could literally say, hey, I I. I interviewed uh, Tom Cruise this morning, and here's what he had to say. And and you could make Tom Cruise say anything you want, but so uh, yeah. But but again, it's so far it's it's useful. And but it, I mean, it's coming. It's it's crazy. Uh, I use Otter, and I think Otter's one of the first ones to get in on this. It's Otter.ai. If you'd like to, you know, check it out. A few hundred dollars um, does a really good job. But uh, something that is an absolute, I must have. And I've been shopping for a transcription service for quite a long time. Is is the separation of speakers is yes. an absolute must. And headliner, I love headliner. You don't separate the speakers. Is it just me, or is is that sort of form of transcription completely useless if you don't separate the speakers? Yeah, if you don't know who's saying what, yeah. I think there's, Headliner's there's trying to get better at that. Adobe Adobe does that in Adobe Premiere. Uh, they can generate a transcript from not not in Audition yet, the audio, but in Premiere, the video. Yes. And Jag, you had a you had a hack with Microsoft. That if you... Yeah. I, so this was actually uh, I have to give credit where credit is due. The uh, podcast editors mastermind sponsored a uh, show notes summit a couple weekends ago, and I've been catching up on the seminars. I didn't watch it live, and uh, there were there was actually a blind couple that talked about the importance of accessibility in podcasting. They showed screen readers and how those work. And one of the tools they use when it came to transcription to cover the, you know, to cover uh, those who are hard of hearing is the newer version of Microsoft Word, not the standalone, but the uh, one that's more focused online and lives online in the cloud. 
has a transcription service where you can upload audio to it and it will generate the text from it. Um, and I believe it will separate speakers as well, Matt. So um, I, I don't have the newest version of Word, so I haven't had a chance to play with it. But if any of our listeners uh, or even the call does have the newest online version of Word, that is a new bell slash whistle that they have offered. Does anybody have any insight? I think, Matt, you might have a little insight on this. How, when we are talking about these different services, how much are we, how different are they? Are they all, is it, is it one company that's being used by, under different brand names? Is it, is it one sort of brain that's doing all of this? Or are there literally all these multiple companies that are competing with each other? I think they're borrowing. So we discovered, I think the last time we spoke, I don't know if it was our group meeting or in the podcast, Super Friends, that it was Descript was taking the transcription from Otter. Yes, and, I believe they told us that at Podcast Movement last year. We talked about that on our private call, the five of us. Yep. Yeah. And, okay. and you had mentioned a fault in it, Jag, where if the next person starts talking, the first word is left behind with the last speaker. Yes. And you had mentioned that as a, yeah, you mentioned that as a fault oh. for Descript. And. Yep. I've noticed it in, in Otter as well. So those there two are go. together. Um, headliner, I know, takes from Google. Um, so yeah, they're kind of all borrowing from one another. And I think there's probably an API that a company can go into and just use transcription. I mean, it's simple. This is why we have so many companies like Riverside now jumping into, hey, we've got transcription. And who's our Riverside person here? Is that you, Johnny? Yes, and we went through the, the Riverside transcription tool in our private call and the words that it did capture were accurate however there was a lot that it didn't capture and it would just show up as a waveform so i i think it was even less than what you would get on mm -hmm. a descript or uh or any a number one of these other services so I, I think in terms of ranking all of these services i would put riverside transcription specifically probably at the bottom interesting Matt, Matt, do you want me to play an example of the uh, robot Dave talking through Descript? Yeah, why not? We got we got lots of time today. Okay. <laughs> this is robot Dave coming to you from Boston. I just got done recording my own podcast with the robot Super Friends. I hope this doesn't freak Catherine out too much. <laughs> so, and now here's the guy who sounds like the movie trailer. In a world where podcasters need help, look to the five heroes who control the information. The podcast Super Friends. We are super. We are podcasters. We are your friends. There you go. That, well, that's good. That, that's uh, what we, our radio folks call pukey. Hey, now. <laughs> 12 in a row next. <laughs> For sure. That's funny. Um, how's the accuracy? Because I, I think at 90%, it doesn't feel like it's good enough. It's it's not. It, I think 90% is somewhat embarrassing. I mean, if you were if one of us were to provide that to a client, they would notice right away that it's so. It, but again, I think it depends on your your um, your use for the transcript. Now, I produce some podcasts for financial entities and they need to run it through compliance. Right. And for them, I try to get it as accurately as possible because this is like a legal issue. And so, you know, you don't want to miss a word and trip up but I, I i'd love i'd love to live in a world oh here i go i'd love to live in a world where um <laughs> where it was just sort of accepted that most transcripts are going to be in the 90 to 95 percent um range for the purposes of of something like uh seo because i i think it gets the job done and it's um but you know it's all amount of time and resources i mean you you can you can outsource your transcript to and Johnny, maybe you do this. I know you outsource certain things to people overseas. Yeah, very I, mysterious in a way. Yeah, so. I have two. I have two people currently that do things for me. So basically, what what I have them do is I have them. I I have both of them on Otter. So I bought them Otter subscriptions. Um, and then what their job is is to proofread it for me. So I've mm -hmm. cut out that time of taking back the AI transcript that you know i could pay someone to say hey make a transcript of this and they could just run it through otter without telling me and send it to me and then i'd be like oh this isn't perfect let me go through and fix it um I, but that's what i pay them for is fixing up the transcriptions as best as possible and granted you know there's a 
there's an there's a language barrier i have a guy in pakistan doing stuff and you know fluency in english was part of the part of the deal when i hired him and he i would say he does 98 99% accuracy and granted we are talking some of these business podcasts have crazy terms like a sofr curve i don't know what that is it's sofr it's some kind of real estate thing but I don't expect him to know stuff like that. And then I have a girl over in Greece that's been working for me for several years and she's from America, but she lives overseas now and she does a fantastic job as well. And what is a big differentiator that they're providing as well is I have them go through and bold every time the host asks a question. So if any of these clients are going to turn these transcripts into blog posts or use them for any anything else, they can easily you know depict between who the speaker is and when a new part of the episode starts so it's like a visual cue of a time code and proper nouns are a big thing right because i i do certain sports podcasts and what i i I use headliner to create those audiograms and if there's like a baseball coach on he starts naming all of his players of oh and this guy you know Billy Ray O'Flanistein or whatever. That's the bad example. But he's like, Irish uh, and Jewish, David. He's, he's everything. That's why the transcription service had problems with it. But like, if he starts running, off, I start to cringe. I'm like, oh god, and I'm gonna have to look up the spelling of all of these people. You know, I hope I can find them on Google because Lord knows that that, that headliner is not gonna know how to spell unusual names. You know, so another thing to look out for, and that's something people are gonna care about. Obviously, if if it's if the person in question is actually looking at it. They want their name spelled correctly. <laughs> I love the uh, compliance aspect of the whole thing. I also think it's great that Don, La- Don LaFontaine has come up twice in this show with the <laughs> inner world. Yeah. I think we'd also like to have Morgan Freeman narrate the transcript mm-hmm. of all of our shows. That would be... Uh, oh, that's the guy. Don the Snoop Dogg Le- option as well. That's always a good one. Isn't he in uh, Waze or GPS? Somebody's GPS. Yo, now, subscribe yeah. to this mother effing podcast. <laughs> Get Samuel L. Jackson to do it. There you go. I had Shaquille O'Neal like take me through Italy on Waze. <laughs> wow. You could get pasta over there. Yeah, you could get pizza over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Papa John's. Are you so, hungry for so- pasta? So I guess another thing that, I mean, if I look back at the root of transcriptions, the only transcription you could ever get was from public television or public radio about 25 years ago. And at the end of the show, for a complete transcript oh, yeah. of the show, oh, right. send three ninety nine dollars in a self-addressed stamped envelope to your yeah. local PBS station. Okay, so Johnny, a self-addressed stamped envelope. Sorry, I can't. Oh, God. <laughs> Is that what these paper bills come in the mail? <laughs> um. All right. So, I mean, I guess what about the cost of it? Does anybody find it too much? I mean, it's nice when it's built into Riverside. It's nice if you don't need to have speakers separated in in the whole thing. I think it's great to be able to send it off to a client so they can find the part that they want. Hey, can you isolate that part for a clip? Yeah. Or, or something like that. Um, but what is your right as of right now? I'm new to podcasting. Tell me which one to use. And why I should use it? I think a dollar. I think Jack, you pay way too much. I think a dollar a minute is way too expensive. If we're talking a ninety-minute podcast, ninety dollars for a tra- for a fully edited transcription. Let's say three people are hard of hearing that listen to your podcast that get a thousand downloads an episode. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're getting a su- sufficient return on your investment into that. Granted, long term, you have perfect transcripts for all eight hundred episodes of your podcast. That's great, but. I would outsource it to a person overseas. That's that's I have found that to be the cheapest, uh, least expensive option. Um, I think I pay I pay my guy in Pakistan. I pay him like twenty bucks, starting at like an hour. So if it's at an hour, it's like twenty bucks. And if it gets to an hour, an hour and a half, I give him like twenty five. Also, if you need a new pair of sneakers, Johnny knows where to get them. <laughs> yeah, but hey, you know, people people shit on, and I'm not saying you're doing this, Jack, but people shit on like, you know, hiring people overseas. What I'm paying this guy, he'd be making $3 an hour doing manual labor outside. I'm asking him to do something that requires significantly less uh, labor intensive from his end, and he's getting quadruple what he normally would be making. So I, I would call that a win win on both sides. You know, to that point, Johnny, and Catherine was kind enough to recommend uh, a transcript proofreader to me through Fiverr that was also overseas. Yeah. That uh, the script did the transcript. I sent it off to her. She corrected it, but there were some mistakes. And mm. for what I was paying her, 
uh, to have an actual human do it. And then what I like about Go Transcript is they actually promote that they have native English speakers uh, doing it, whether they're in England or Australia yeah, or absolutely. Canada or the U.S. And so uh, for me to spend a few more bucks to, to be able to sort of, quote unquote, set it and forget it uh, is, is worth it to me. Sure. Um, I have a, I have some clients that are on, you know, a la carte plans that will pay for the actual transcript. I have some clients that pay me a full boat to, to handle all the production and handle everything. And then I include the transcript in that higher rate for them. So it depends on, on what, what you need. But I think what's the key here is if you're a client and you are hiring any of the five of us to work on your podcast, you don't want to worry about the nuts and bolts of this thing. You just want to mm -hmm. say, Catherine, Johnny, Matt, Dave, handle this for me. So I think what we're talking to here with the ins and outs of all the transcriptions, the transcription stuff is probably for more of the DIY podcaster who's, you know, knows they have to get a transcript up. Uh, by the way, I, I didn't know. Of course, I didn't know how much I pay Trent, but now I know because I just looked it up. But it's um, I pay seventy five seventy five dollars a month and I probably use it at least 10 times a month, sometimes more. I like the luxury of not worrying about whether it's going to be there or not, not getting hit with a bunch. I used to use a service called Temi, T-E-M-I, which is pretty good, pretty accurate. And 90%. that was you, <laughs> probably 95, <laughs> but whatever. But, but with that, I remember that if it was short, like on the 15 to 20 minute side, you'd probably only pay like five to seven bucks. And if it was like an hour long, you might pay as much as 13 to 15 bucks for the transcript. So, you know, it's, to me, it's the cost of doing business. And yes, certain clients, I'm charging them for the transcript. So it's fine for me, but, you know, make your own call. Dave, on, on, on Trent, was that unlimited for that monthly fee or was there a limit on how much you could use? I, I'm pretty sure it's unlimited. Good to know. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea to go and find somebody reputable, like a Trent, a Temi, Otter, Descript, because I got stuck in some fly-by-night stuff. And companies that actually disappeared and got Couple sold times. halfway through. And, you know, one of the things instead of, I, I will just want to mention, because I, I wanted to go back to this question about optimizing transcriptions for SEO. So I thought that, at least I was told, which is always a big mistake in podcasting, that if I just copied and pasted the entire transcription into the uh, show uh, note or into the uh, episode page on my website, that. It, Google would list it as being too long a read and yeah. wouldn't, you know, mark it into a, you know, the three or four minutes that they wanted people what to do. scumbag their... told you that? I don't know, but I, it, I'm i dumb for believing it. And maybe it was true at one point, but maybe it's not true anymore. Maybe they're, maybe Google is smart enough to actually recognize the, the, the transcription. So this one company, Poden, had, you can embed the podcast as a widget into the website. And I thought that was pretty good until the company disappeared and got sold and went broke. And then the mechanism broke. And then my websites were like, had like this big box of nothing, which was supposed to be the transcriptions that disappeared from the website. So be, be careful who you get involved with. And then I gave my money to a second company called Avrio, A-V-R-I-O, which really I think was dealing more with like companies and groups like, like, medical groups or people who did inter interviews or seminars. Anyway, they were from Cyprus. That thing went broke last week. So mm -hmm. there I was with my second company. And so I feel like I've kind of been throwing my money down the drain. And if I were to add up all the transcription money I've peeled off this year, it's probably close, close to seven or $800. Jeepers. Um, so get, get somebody reputable that's been in the business in the game for a long time that comes recommended. Don't be like me and try to go chasing something that you think might be the you know, new and innovative thing. Cause there's a lot to, of uh, fraud out there. Can I share sort of just hearing that tale, Matt? One of, one of the things I think is frustrating for me about transcription is that it seems necessary, but it doesn't seem major. I, and, and again, not to diminish anybody who relies on them as that's their way for getting a podcast episode. I'm not trying to take anything away from, from that at all, but it, it's, it's hard to spend this much time and money and effort to make something so perfect and branded and ready for, for the public consumption. And the impact is just not that great. So it seems so disproportional, the amount of time and money and effort that we have to talk about and think about these things. And it, it just, it, 
always seems like it's not the thing that's moving the needle, at least for my clients. I, I, I Again, I know some people really appreciate it and there are reasons to have it, but this, this is exactly, you know, this is a lot. We're, now we're starting to talk about hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The average hobbyist podcaster or somebody who's just getting started, they're not going to have that kind of time and effort. They should be spending their time and effort doing so many other things to, to make their podcast strong. So I, I always, whenever we talk about transcripts, it's, it always feels just very necessary evil in a, in a way for me. Yeah. It feels icky. <laughs> There's an ick factor. What, yeah. I mean, I mean, 10, I mean, a successful podcast We'll call it five digit downloads. It could be four digit downloads. That's thousands of people. And how many people are going to touch the transcript? One hand yeah. or two hands? Three or, or zero. Zeros. Yeah. I had, so I had one request for a transcript in 350 episodes of the Sound Off podcast. And it was one person who was, who was hard of hearing. That's one request. Now I don't know if I don't know if if I should be doing this for the SEO and how much that really does benefit the SEO, but yet I still feel compelled to to, to do a transcript every week and and keep up with the Joneses the of podcasting. Joneses. Yeah, I feel. I and feel yet we've yes. cranked out forty minutes on this topic alone. <laughs> yeah, well, some people are going to want to. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, every one of our clients, I think, asks about it at some yeah. point. Sorry, Jack, we cut you off. No, it's fine. I was. Um... I was going to say the college uh, podcast I did for my college radio station's 50th anniversary, we have an alum who is deaf. In fact, he, when he was a radio DJ, he went by Deaf Jeff on the air. He was uh, born 90% hearing loss, I think it was. And I remember when I, when I spoke to him and I interviewed him for the podcast, he actually thanked me for doing transcripts of the podcast uh, because he doesn't always catch everything when he's, you know, when he's listening to a podcast. And so this project that I've done about hundred episodes in or so. And yeah, it's time to hand edit all these transcripts. Cause it's, it's not a moneymaker for me. It's a passion project. And every time I'm like, you know, I don't think I feel like doing the transcript. Well, you know, Jeff might want to see it. You know, I, I think of Jeff, <laughs> Jeff. and hey, Jeff's a really good guy. And I, and, and <laughs> the fact that he went out of his way to thank me for doing it as an individual who's hard of hearing oh, that, that, that really resonated with me. And the SEO. <laughs> And and I'll bring it full circle. Def Jeff said his day job actually works on SEO, so he's got both. We need to have him come weigh in on this then. Well, we'd have to type out. We'd have to write out what we're saying on whiteboards. <laughs> Jeff, he, what do you think no, of SEO? He, no, he, he, he reads lips. In okay. fact, <laughs> he's a great follow on Twitter during a Syracuse basketball game because when Jim Beheim was the coach, he would post whatever Jim Beheim was saying in the huddle. <laughs> so I think a lot of the transcription that gets done there's an AI component to it in some facet or another. So I want to talk a little bit about, cause we talk about the transcription toys that are, that are all out there. There's also a lot of AI toys that have come to the front that will do your clips that will uh, reels and shorts and, and all that stuff. So what's and been show your notes. experience? Yeah. What's been your yeah, show, show notes, notes too. So what's been your experience so far? Anyone, uh, anyone Bueller. <laughs> Um, so I can talk about this extensively. So please cut me off if I get on too much of a soapbox, but I did a four part series on my sub stack about AI uses in podcasting and I'll, I'll make it very high level. Essentially what I did is I broke up AI and podcasting into two sections of what it's currently being used for. There's production and then there's content within production. Ultimately the argument is, is that as far as AI has progressed, it's, we're still in the infancy right now, but in terms of production versus content, it is much more helpful in production. And the two uh, within production, I highlighted Descript and I highlighted Isotope RX as tools that you can use. And then some plugins here and there that people can use. But essentially in terms of speeding up the turnaround process of your podcast, AI is really helpful, whether it's using Descript to transcribe out your podcast so that you can edit, whether it's using Isotope RX or a number of other plugins that will actually listen to your audio and give you recommendations to help reduce plosives, DSing, uh, reducing reverb or echo, background noise removal, things like that. It's really, really powerful. So you don't have to go in and actually learn these things yourself. So this really applies more to producers or people that are working on either on their own podcasts or producers who are doing what we do and working with clients. If you want to be able to create really great sounding podcasts, you need to utilize some of these AI tools. Then I moved over into the content side of things versus where it's uh, 
actually using AI to come up with content for your podcast or using AI to repurpose content for your podcast. So the two companies that I highlighted within that are the two tools. One of them was ChatGPT. ChatGPT can be really, really helpful or it can be really, really lackluster. And that all depends on your level of input. If you're using ChatGPT to help can you know, come up with ideas for your podcast, you have to be very, very detailed. Use that whole limit of the input that you can type in. This is exactly what my podcast is about. This is exactly what I'm looking to do with it. And the example that I used for ChatGPT was that I think the first input I put uh, on the Substack post was, I have an entrepreneurship podcast. I need to do 10 episodes. Give me 10 topics. And it gave me 10 really, you know, basic topics and that anybody would look at and go, oh, that's kind of clickbaity. I don't want to do that. Then I uh, contradicted that with a much more detailed input, which was I need to do a 10 episode series. I'm using no guests. All of these need to uh, be built around the idea of what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur. And I need all of these 10 episodes to connect to each other. And I need you to explain to me what each episode is going to be about and how they connect to each episode to create its own series so that someone could listen to all 10 of these episodes and nothing else and still get a really big takeaway from it. And it gave me this huge breakdown of everything that you, you as a podcaster could take. And so all of that's available on the Substack. You can read it all for free. And then the final one I put out, which is what we've just been talking about, I'd be curious on your thoughts, is a company called, uh, let me pull up the post. It was called Momentum.fm. And so what Momentum.fm does is it takes your, oh man, I can't even pull it up. Essentially what it does is it takes your RSS feed or it takes your YouTube channel. And the first problem that sticks out to me here is that it's only taking stuff that's already published. So... Mm -hmm for one of the tools that it offered was, oh, here's a bunch of title suggestions. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me. The episode is already out. Why would I change the title after the fact? That doesn't help me at all. Uh, the other one was, uh, oh, here, the AI will uh, transcribe out the episode. That's great. Then it will go in even further and say, here are segments that the AI thinks would be useful for videos, and we can even create videos beyond that. So Momentum does all of that stuff and kind of just goes deeper and deeper and deeper to help create content from stuff that you've already put out. And then the final thing that I thought was funny was uh, it said, oh, we can highlight people and links that were mentioned in the podcast. And so the episode that I highlighted on the Substack was between two men and it said, oh, here's a suggestion. Here's a story about uh, the guest as a daughter and her hardworking. So it thought that the, the guest was a girl. And so that mm. clearly is not going to be helpful to anybody. Mm. And then the other one was, oh, we've highlighted all these people in links. One of them was you are BS. I've never heard of that person. So a lot of these tools are really, really new and fresh and are still building to become better and better. And I'm sure that they will over time. But in terms of whether you're using AI to help speed along the turnaround of an episode or help create extra content, I would focus much more on the former. Momentum. F oh, sorry, okay. I just, uh, Johnny. Is it the website actually Momentum FM? Because that's not coming up for me for some reason. I got I got a fault too. Yeah. Studio Momentum FM. Oh. There you go. Well, I was going to say to Johnny's point about Wait. Chat GPT. Well, while you guys are pulling that up, what was interesting to me was also in that show notes summit there was a section on creating show notes from Chat GPT. So what was interesting about it because there's a character input limit uh the mm -hmm. person doing the demonstration actually broke the show into four chunks that took the transcript you know write a summary of chunk one of chunk two chunk three chunk four and then it took the four generated summaries and they put all that in together and then it gave show notes on on the entire show there are uh, other services out there that i've been playing with none really stick out to me more than another but uh pod squeeze is one Capsho, C A P S H O, and Swell.ai. What they will do is uh, for various prices, and I haven't spent a lot of time with them, you can upload your audio. It will generate a transcript and or show notes. So it can theoretically do both for you uh, and handle a lot of that production, post production for you. And from the little bit I've played with, not a bad start. I can write better show notes as a human being than, than the AI That's can. That's the key. And but it might give me a start, or it might give me okay. Well, that's not a bad summary. I can I can add add and and tweak from here. But I think that's where we are with a lot of the AI. Is it's mm -hmm. not it's a good start, and it might save some time. But you need a human as a gatekeeper for most of it. 
It's for momento, sure. That's... not momentum. <laughs> momento. Okay. Ah. That explains ah. it why I still wasn't able to find. Um, it, John, Jag, excellent points because it, AI is, it, it can be powerful. It can be a great thing. It's, it can be a great time saver, but it's a, it, so far it's a tool, you know, coming up with, and Johnny, maybe you said it, like, you know, coming up with um, 10, I have some podcasters I work with that say, I don't have time to, to put together a list of questions for this guest. Can you help me? And so, you know, I would always say less questions, fewer questions are usually better. But nevertheless, um, if you yeah, if you punch that into, you know, for a uh, forensic accountant who who deals with corporations in the construction industry, give me 10 interesting questions to ask them in an interview and they'll give it to you. Chat GPT will do it for you. They're not necessarily great questions, but, you know, if you have a little bit of writer's block or whatever, it, it could possibly save a ton of time for you. That's it's, that's essentially what I said. Is it, it's not it's not the end all be all, but it will help get the gears turning in your head, so you can right. take what they give you and then kind of add the human touch to it. I used to think a bit. Well, I still think writing show notes is a pain in the ass. Um, I think when we write show notes, we, we want to write them for Google more than we write them for people. People. I know that's sad to say, but it's the truth. But I really like what Otter does here. This is an episode that's coming out tonight for the Sound Off podcast. But on the on the, I, I believe this is a, counts as a form of of AI, and that's uh, you know a little bit of a summary. Here's what you spoke about throughout your show, and I think it's oh yeah, now I remember. Oh, I did ask that question. Okay, I will put that in the show notes, and so I find that sort of form of AI to be kind of helpful when you're when i'm doing show notes so anyway just what i see in all yeah that's a good the, example um and that, yeah, great example the 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 thing um now i'm forgetting who said it i guess it was you jagged the the having to split a transcript into four parts it's already giving me a headache is there yeah is there a paid version of chat gpt where you where you could put in well, a that's whole where these Dave, that's where these other ones come in that specialize in podcasts, where you can either upload the audio or the transcript. The, the three, again, that I know of are Swell.ai, CapShow, and PodSqueeze that, that okay. I have in my email. Okay, so I've, I've played with all three of those, Jag. Please. And, and they, they do a great job of giving you the transcript and kind of what they – they pitch as their value add is like is the content repurposing it. So I, I one of them I think it was Cap Show or Pod, I think it was Cap Show was like oh well if you want to use uh do a social media post you click this and here's a bunch of generated headlines and generated uh, episode descriptions to specifically for LinkedIn and then an email newsletter and you can drag and drop different pieces of content. The problem that I've that I ran into and the reason I canceled all of the subscriptions to all of those is it's all <laughs> clickbait. It's all mm. very much like not even just writing it for Google, it's writing it for like the 12 year old on YouTube that's looking for Minecraft hacks. And it's like, <laughs> it, it is just, it, it is just this most vanilla, just any person with a functioning prefrontal cortex is gonna look at that and go, either a robot wrote that, or it's something that is just so Ty Lopez-y that I don't even wanna click on it. And it's just, right. I, I, I was very unimpressed by all of it, but I'm not saying I'm all out on AI. I think it's just, I, I think we're, I, I've made the comparison that it's like where we are with Tesla's now at the stage of AI, we're at the horse and buggy stage of AI. Yeah, you, you can you can do an interview podcast with, say, uh, an interior decorator and punch it into one of those. And it comes up with, a, you know, a proposed audiogram or clip from the pod. And the headline will say, the shocking truth about your bathroom is revealed by this interior decorator. And, <laughs> yeah. you, and, and you know, and you, meanwhile, your, your, pers your interior decorator didn't say anything shocking at all. But but mm, this is what this is where it's aiming. I have a counter example that I think is actually helpful. I know I've mentioned uh, within our group that headlines have always been a, or titles have been a struggle for me. And I started using from CoSchedule the headline analyzer. So this is like the titles of things. And I have to say, so I've been using this program for a year. It has been very helpful to sort of teach me what Google and other search engines are looking for in a non clickbaity way of what it's what they're looking for in questions. I've learned a lot about how to think in questions because the search engines are trying to answer questions. So back to Matt's example, you know, and even Johnny with your you know, getting your transcribers to highlight and bold the questions, starting to think about 
the internet is trying to answer questions. If you're thinking in questions, you can start marrying those two things together. Um, and as I was using the headline analyzer, learning more about what the what is considered to be good SEO in those headlines. And I have to say, Johnny, you were saying, you know, what good does it do for us to change the titles of past episodes? There's one client of mine where we're actually considering changing some of the titles to make them a little bit more optimized be because as we all know podcasts have legs and it's it's been sort of interesting to start thinking about um let me I'll, I'll switch gears a little bit and say as i'm putting into these headlines proposing them in the headline analyzer it's pleasing to me to be getting these great seo scores and these great headline scores right off the bat which teaches me like okay i've learned how to sort of think in the words, the word choice and the phrasing in a way that's going to be SEO friendly. Um, but anyway, we, we do have a client that I'm we're thinking about changing some of the titles, not for clickbait purposes, but because there's good content there. And we want to we want people to connect to it. And so if we're able to get titles that are bringing people in and bringing listeners in, that might be worth it for us to just kind of as an experiment with some of these older episodes. It's a fascinating case study, Catherine. I'd be curious to see if you got a boost in downloads yeah. on previous episodes after you do that. We're we're just we're in the thinking stage right now. So I like that the ability to go in and just change all the all the headlines going or, you know the titles of the episode and going right back to the beginning and it's it is you probably get an SEO boost off all all that. Mm. But and also, but let me stress that I, I not clickbait, but it has been it's been a very good lesson for me to just learn what is being looked for. And now specifically the tool that I use, they've they, you know, they now have an AI feature. So you can ask the AI, what's another way of writing this headline and just seeing what some of the options are. Some of them are totally inappropriate. They're for the Minecrafters. But then other ones are they're right on the money or you know, it's like, Oh, that's a that's a great way of saying the exact same thing I was trying to say. So, the, you know, it. I don't know. It, for all the fears that I have about AI, uh, there are some some benefits too. But yeah, there you go. Am and I then I found ten dollars. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, David. No, I was just going to say I might have missed it. Did you mention what service that was, Catherine? Because I know you've talked about that one before. Yeah, it's so the the it's Co Schedule is the company, and then. It, they have a headline analyzer. That's the tool that I use. Close schedule. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Is that a program or, or is that a, a Chrome extension? It is. It is a website on the internet. That's. <laughs> they probably have, they probably have an they have an extension. I'm sure, but I I just it's go a weekly right to mailer. there. Do yeah, it's a pay? yeah. It's the yes. It is. It is a paid service, but I have found it <sighs> for all, all the copywriting I do. I and the, the because show notes. I enjoy writing the show notes. It's been extremely helpful. I Matt, Matt's not in. Matt's not allowed to sign up given his track record. As soon as he puts in his <laughs> It'll go out of card, business. the company goes yeah. out of oh, business. Oh yeah! Do, do not do not jinx this one for me, Matt. Let me see if I have an. If there's let me let me see if there's Guys, a, a, company a code. Black plague. Can I? Let me see if they if they'll give me a, a bump for for putting you in touch in touch with that. I'm okay. Oh, it's it's. I mean, it's great. I mean, maybe I'm disappointed all the time because I expect these things to perform as well as I can, and and none of them really do. It's to, to Johnny's. Yeah, well, to, I, to I've, Johnny's okay, point, I've used why? it for already a year. I've used it a year, so I've used it for a whole year, and I've already signed up for the second year. So just again, and, and if they go out of business, using this, for the listeners, she's been using this for a year. She told us about it a month ago. How dare you, it. Johnny? <laughs> hiding it from us. <laughs> how dare you? You were just, you just remembered I talked about it a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, Kat, Catherine's the type when you go to see the band. She's like, I, I was, I was here when they were playing like bars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those all, all those nights I told you we couldn't hang out. I was going to see them. I didn't want you guys to know. I have their first album, which was a demo reel, which was I bought out of somebody's trunk. So, yeah, <laughs> on cassette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if we mentioned anything in this show, any form of service, I'm going to make sure that it hits the show notes. Um, I won't bother with getting the prices. People can go and find that themselves. But whatever services got mentioned will go in the show notes of this episode. Uh, and the way we're going to find out is we're going to get a transcript of the episode. <laughs> I'm going to put a self-addressed stamped envelope for $3.99 to the SoundOff Media Company. I'll send myself a transcript. And then we're going to find out exactly what, what was said in the entire show. And then have AI write the show notes for you, Matt. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. 
Actually, it's only, it's only going to be a very snappy headline. Accurate, and all the all the websites we mentioned are going to be screwed up. It's Five be podcast super friends tell you the horrible things you're doing wrong on your podcast. <laughs> the shocking. We'll truth. get ninety percent. Ninety percent will be correct, and our title is going to be amazing. <laughs> Why ninety percent transcription rate sucks, <laughs> <laughs> and what you can do I, about I, it. <laughs> I mean, listen. I know we we we. we kind of thought is are we going to be able to get an hour out of this and it turns out we did we did get an hour out of transcript and show notes <laughs> and a little bit of ai um is it change is it going to is what we spoke about here going to change the way you do anything yes for me i I'm, i've been taking i've taken down all these time savers and uh just in the spirit of what we talked about I, i'm going to check out catherine's uh i'm going to join catherine's cult because um you know, it, it more and more. I, I don't know, but you guys, it, it's it's not going away. The fact that we have to, I hate writing show notes too. It's a pain in the neck. But if there are quick ways to do it and effective ways to do it, that's one thing. So for me, all right. I'm still going to uh, continue to to subscribe to things and put companies out of business. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> David. David, we've reached the end of the episode. Can you please do your obligatory plug of your music podcast? I don't want to break yeah. that streak. <laughs> well, well, since you asked, in the most recent episode of Past Tens, the Top Ten Time Machine, we took the time machine back to 1979 to consider the top ten albums this week in 1979. TimeMachinePod.com. Thank you, Johnny. You're welcome. <laughs> Rock on. Round we go. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye, Bye everybody. Everyone. Everyone. Please go read my AI <laughs> series on Substack, substack.com slash Johnny Podcasts. Anybody else want to put anything in the show notes? Well, yeah, I'm going to find out if there is a promo code for me or something, uh, an affiliate for the co-schedule. You totally deserve to have one. Yes. Valid for everybody except Matt Cundell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, no Canada. Full price. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.